who is in a perfect marriage? If your marriage is perfect, just put up your hand. How do you know? Hey, here we have some right here. <laughs> Oh, my wife put up her hand. I will pay you now, my wife. <laughs> no, it's true, isn't it? There's no such thing as an absolutely perfect marriage. Because none of us is perfect. And we need God's help always in a marriage relationship. That's why the title of this is Marriage with God's Help. One time I was talking with a psychiatrist. He was a Christian and he did a lot of counseling of, of marriage couples. I asked him, what do you think is the biggest problem in marriage? And he said one word, selfishness. Mm. Selfishness, I find it in my own heart. I want my way. I want my needs to be met first. It's in the heart of every man and every woman. But in a marriage relationship, we can help each other. Except that we're selfish. Last week we talked about husbands. And we saw that God's word is pretty tough on husbands. <laughs> Most husbands would like to be the big boss. I'm the commander here. <laughs> you do what I say. But God tells us to be a servant leader. <laughs> Not a dictator. But a leader who serves the people with him. And a lot of men don't like this. Because we, we want to be the boss. And today we're going to look for wives. And God says that a wife, he's calling a wife to submit to her husband. And a lot of wives would say, I don't want to submit to my husband. So today we need to understand what does God mean when he says this? So first we need to pray. Oh Lord God, we need your help today. There are many misunderstandings about what submission means. Help us, Lord, we pray. There are many misunderstandings about what leadership is. 
رهبری سو استفاده شده help us to understand your will for us ای خداوند اجازه بده و کمکمون کن که اراده تو برای خودمون رو بفهمیم You know, Lord, that our marriages are difficult sometimes. Would you help us to build stronger marriages? Help us to love each other as God loves us. We need your help, O oh Lord. So just now we cast our cares before you. Some of us have been in very difficult marriages. We cast those cares on you now, Lord. Would you open our hearts to your truth? And help us to have soft hearts towards you and towards one another. And we pray this in Jesus' strong and powerful name. Amen. 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 So I start with a story today. We start with a story. Oh. It's about the mayor of a city. And the mayor was driving home with his wife in the car. And they stopped in at a gas station. And the gas station guy came out. And he looked right past the mayor over to the wife. And he said, Sue, is that you? And she looked right past her husband and she said, Joe, is that you? So the wife got out of the car and they're just talking, 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 talking. And the mayor is just sitting in the car. When they paid the bill, the wife got back in the car. When they paid the money for the gas. And the mayor said to his wife, Who is Joe? <laughs> and she said, Well, I knew Joe in high school. We were boyfriend and girlfriend. <laughs> We even talked about getting married. And the mayor looked at his wife. He said, well, you just think, if you married Joe, you would have been the wife of a gas station guy, not the wife of the mayor. <laughs> And she said to him, Oh, no, honey. Oh, no, it's not me. If I married Joe, he would be the mayor. <laughs> Now there's nothing wrong with being a gas station guy, right? <laughs> But there's a woman who understands that a wife can help her husband to be a better man. Now, 
Last week we looked at Proverbs 18 and 21. Hafte pish amsal hasht misuyek ba nikhat kardim. It says the tongue has the power of life and death. The way we speak to one another can give life to our partner. We can speak life words. Or we can speak death words. And a lot of it has to do with the attitude of our heart. Sometimes our hearts become very hard towards one another. Does this make sense? Yes. We have troubles in our marriage and our heart just becomes very hard. That's where we need the power of God Almighty to come into our hearts and soften our heart. Sometimes we turn away from each other because we have a hard heart. We need to pray, God, help me to turn toward my partner. With a soft heart. So we need God's help in our marriages. Last week we talked to husbands about loving your wife as Christ loves the church. And there are four kinds of love in this passage in Ephesians. This says, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. That is sacrificial love. Jesus gave his life up for us. You just think how it was for Jesus. He was the king of the whole universe. He could have come here as a big dominant dictator. But he sacrificed all that and came as a humble servant. And he even went to the cross to pay the penalty for our sins. That's the model for us to follow, husbands. Humble service to our wife and our family. But there's also purifying love. This says that Christ loved the church and made her holy. To present her to himself as a radiant church. Yeah. Jesus wanted to present the church to himself as radiant, smiling. This is the kind of love that fills up a wife's life. And helps her to smile when she thinks of her husband. 
و کمک میکنه که لبخند به لب اون زن بیاد وقتی که در مورد شوهرش فکر میکنه Then there's a caring love. بعد سومی هست یک عشقی که کر میکنه عشقی که مراقبت میکنه نگران برای خانمش Men care for themselves and God says care for your wife in the same way. How, how is she doing physically? How is she doing spiritually? And finally, it's an unbreakable love. This is where the scripture says, for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and will cling to his wife and the two will become one flesh. This is a love that will not quit. Even when times are difficult, we continue to work on the relationship. Now I think when a husband loves a wife with all with like this. He will win the heart of his wife. He will win the heart of his wife. This is what God is looking for. So today we want to look at especially for wives. And in this passage, it says, "Wives, submit to your husbands, as to the Lord." We know that all the one another parts of the Bible are important for marriage. Last week we talked about some of these. Love one another, important for marriage. Forgive one another. That's important in marriage, isn't it? Because we offend each other. God calls us to forgive each other. Be kind and gentle to one another. But I want you to look at Ephesians 5 and verse 21. This is a very unusual one. It says, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Before God talks to us about wives and husbands, he says that we're all to submit to one another. Yes. I want to get what your points are. Okay. In this passage, before he talks about wives and husbands, he says all of us are to submit to one another. So it's not only the wife who submits to the husband. The husband also needs a submissive attitude toward his wife. 
شوهرها هم یک رفتار اطاعتی نسبت به زنشون بر داشته باشن. So let's see what it means to submit. پس بزنیم بفهمیم یعنی چی اطاعت کرده. And just like last week, we're going to blast away the false ideas before we build the true ones. So first of all, submission is not being inferior. In the family of God, women are totally equal to men. In Galatians chapter 3 and verse 28, God says, in his family, there's no Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female. Now I ask you, are there still Jews and Greeks out in the world here? Um, can you repeat it? Are there still Jews and Greeks out in the world? Are there? Yes. Yes, there are. But in the family of God, we're all the same. So, eth ethnically, there are differences, but we're all one in Jesus Christ. درسته که در فرهنگ مختلف یه ذره تفاوت های وجود داره اما همه ما در عیسی مسیح یکی هستیم سوشالی there are still the rich and the poor but we're all one in Jesus Christ از نظر اجتماعی هم ما ثروتمند و فقیر داریم اما هممون در عیسی مسیح یکی هستیم and we still have male and female but we're all equal in Jesus Christ بله هنوز هم مردها و زن ها هستن اما در عیسی مسیح and what God is saying here to women is this. When you became a Christian, you found a new freedom. You're equal with all the men in your world. But don't use your equality to abuse the man. Does this make sense? God is saying, don't use your new freedom to try to be the big boss. Because we're all equal in the family of God. So it's not being inferior. Submission is not being passive. It's not just sitting there and letting your husband make all the decisions for you. When you read in the Bible, you see some very powerful women. Sometimes people think that to be submissive is like being just a carpet on the floor. <laughs> you just sit there and let everybody walk all over you. That's not it. It's not being silent. 
معنی دیگه ای که اشتباه تو ذهن آهنه هست اینه که فکر کنن زن ها باید همیشه ساکت باشن For some people to submit means you just sit down and be quiet بعضی از فرنگ ها فکر میکنن اگر باید اطاعت کنن یعنی که تو فرنگ جو بشینم اصلا حرف هم نزن That's not it این هم نیست منظوره God has given gifts and abilities to women and men. And men, it's our responsibility to encourage our wives to speak up. In some places in the world, a woman does not have a voice at all. But in the, in the family of God, God has given us all gifts and abilities and we're to use them. Men, we need our wives to help us think well. So maybe I can give you an example. In Acts chapter 5, there's a story of Ananias and Sapphira. They sold a field and they got the money. And they gave a part of the money to the church, but they said they gave all the money to the church. And do you remember what happened to both the husband and the wife? They both died. Was that wife submissive? This is a good question. Listen for a minute. It's not being silent. That wife should have said to her husband, I cannot do this. I submit to God first. You're asking me to do something that's immoral. It's wrong. A husband needs a wife who will speak the truth to him in love. And finally, it's not being unfulfilled. When a husband and wife work together as a team, there's a great sense of fulfillment for both the husband and the wife. So, if this is not what submission is, then what is submission? First of all, it's an attitude of the heart. It's having a soft heart toward your husband. This is a command from God. God is saying, wives, submit to your husbands. It means that the habit of your life is 
to cooperate with your husband. یعنی که اون عادتی عادت بشه که با شوهر خودتون همکاری کنید. And women, it's something that you do to yourself. A husband cannot force submission on you. Here's confession time for me, okay? As a young husband, I tried to make my wife submit to me. How do you think that worked for me? Fight every day. Not very well. <laughs> Fight every day. <laughs> this is a very important point. Women, this is something you do to yourself. And husband, when I learned to love my wife as Christ loves the church, I began to change. And when I began to change, Ruth began to change. Yes. My big mistake before was trying to make her change. And God was asking me to submit myself to Him first. And let God change my heart. And then He worked with Ruth. It's an attitude of the heart. You need to know, I still don't do this perfectly. And Ruth does not do it perfectly. So we have to forgive one another. But what we try to do now is to seek the good of the other person first. We can still be selfish. That's why we need God's help all the time. So a wife who is submissive will say this. She will say, voluntarily, I will look out for my husband's good. I will work with him and support him and help him to be the best he can be. The second thing is that submission is a ministry to the Lord Jesus. This verse says, Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. This is not a duty laid upon you by your husband. It's a service to the Lord. And when a wife has a soft heart towards her husband, this is very pleasing to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's very easy to have a hard heart. We need the Holy Spirit to soften our hearts. So whatever you do, work at it with all your heart 
as if you're working for the Lord. پس اینجوری فکر کنید که شما با تمام قلبتون دارید به خداوند خدمت می‌کنید. That's Colossians 3:23-24. Submission is also a ministry to your husband. Do you remember in the book of Genesis that God saw the man and he was all alone? And God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper for him, suitable for him. Sometimes, when, when we think of this word, a helper, it seems to be a demeaning term, a put down for women. And it seems like the man is the big boss and the woman is just the helper. That is not it at all. Do you know who else is called our helper in the Bible? The Holy Spirit is called our helper. God Almighty is called our, our helper. That's not a put down. Wives, in your marriage, your husband needs your help. Maybe your husband doesn't think he needs your help. But he does. And God has given you gifts and abilities. And he needs you to be there by his side. You're both on the same team. So what does sub submission mean then? Oops, I didn't know I did that. How do I go back? Well, here's what submission means, okay? Submission means a, a woman will say, I believe God has called my husband to be a leader in the home. And God has called me to help him become the best possible person he can be. We're not in competition. We're on the same team together. Let each of you submit to one another. Mutual submission is what this is. So, mutual submission comes in Ephesians 5 and 21. Let each of you submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. This is the big principle over all that God is teaching us here. When a wife submits to her husband, 
She puts his needs above her own needs. And she says, I will seek the good of my husband before I seek my own good. And when a husband submits to his wife, he says the same thing. He says, I will put my needs under her needs. And I will meet her needs first. And the amazing thing is this, when both husband and wife are, are serving one another, who gets their needs met? God. Both of them do, but the Lord is also very pleased. Yes. The husband is caring for the wife and the wife is caring for the husband. Now we have one more passage of scripture to look at. First Peter 3, what does a submissive wife look like? And there are three points here. First of all, she wins her husband with the quality of her life. First Peter 3, verse 1. Wives, in the same way, be submissive to your husband. So that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives. Amen. You know, I remember a woman in our church. She became a Christian, but her husband was not a Christian. In fact, her husband was a very proud man. And when she became a Christian, she started talking about Jesus all the time to her husband. And she would leave the Bible open on the table, hoping he would read it. And she would write a note about Jesus and leave it somewhere for him. <laughs> and she would talk and talk and talk about Jesus all the time. She would also complain to her husband. When he did something wrong, she would find fault with him. And she came to me afterwards and she said this. She came to me and she said, I've not been a very pleasant person to live with. Do you understand? Yeah. She started to pray. Oh Lord, change me. Help me to be more like Jesus. 
So that without a word he can see Jesus in me. And do you know what happened? The beauty of Christ was shining in her. And that husband came to her and he said, What's happening to you? Because he saw the transforming power of the Holy Spirit in her life. And he is now a beautiful follower of Jesus. He's a fine Christian man. A husband will be looking at his wife. And when he sees Christ working in that life, the wife cannot change the husband. But God can change the one man. And then God will go to work on the husband. Mm. Now please understand this. God does not say this lightly. It's not that this is an easy thing to do. We need the power of the Holy Spirit, don't we? To live this transformed life. And I promise you this. As you allow the Holy Spirit to change the way you are, this church, the Spirit of Truth Church, will pray for you and love you. Will support you and encourage you. Through the good times and the bad times. They will stand with you in the love of God. There's another truth here. She values inner beauty more than outer beauty. That's what it says. Your beauty should not come from outward adornment. It should be that of the inner self. So this is not a statement against outer beauty. So I look around here tonight and I say, oh, you look very beautiful. Is this saying that, ah, don't wash your hair, don't care about anything? <laughs> That's not what God is saying. We spend a lot of time on our outward beauty. God is saying, how much time do you spend on your inner beauty? How's your heart? How's your character? Because that's where the true beauty comes out. Sometimes you can see a person who looks very beautiful on the outside. But you see that their heart is ugly. It's full of bitterness and unforgiveness. And when you come to know that person, they're not beautiful anymore. So God is saying the big thing is inner beauty. Have a spirit of cooperation. Not complaining or fighting. 
دائما جنگ بکنین و مشاجره کنین و So there's the question, how much time do we spend praying about our character? And it brings us to the last point. A submissive woman respects her husband. This is from Ephesians 5 and 33. It says, wives, respect your husbands. This is a wife who says something like this. I know I'm not less than my husband in any way. In some ways, I'm more sensitive to God than my husband is. But God has designed my husband to be the head of the home. And I will encourage him and support him and love him and tell the truth to him پس من میام اطاعتش میکنم، خدمتش میکنم و حقیقت رو همیشه بهش میگم. And help him to be the best he can possibly be. و کمکش میکنم اون بهترینی که میتونه بشه بشه. And that's the truth. و این حقیقته. Let's close with just a couple of thoughts. اجازه بدین که به پایان برسونم با چند جمعه دیگه. If you're a woman and you're not married, اگر شما یه خانمی هستید که هنوز ازدواج نکردید Pray that God will help you to be this kind of woman. دعا کنید که خدا کمکتون کنه یک چنین زنی باشید. A woman who loves the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. یک زنی باشید که کلام خدا رو با تمام وجودش، فکر و ذهن و روحش دوست داره. And if you're a man who's not married. و اگر مردی هستید که ازدواج نکردید Look for a woman like that. She won't be perfect. But if she loves the Lord, that's a great start. If you're a married man, don't be harsh with your wife. Be a servant leader in your home. Be a man that she can respect. And if you're a wife, decide to submit to your husband. To pray for him and encourage him. And to live in such a way that Jesus is shining through you. And pray that God will do the changing in your husband. Let's pray. Oh Lord our God, we come to you just now. We need your help, O oh Lord. We remember that Jesus humbled himself. That he submitted himself to the Father's will. That Jesus came here as a servant. And gave himself for us. And you call us. To give ourselves to one another. To be full of love and service. Would you please forgive us Lord when we have failed. We have failed. Forgive us Lord. 
Fill us with your Holy Spirit. We thank you that we've come into this new life with Jesus. There's no shame or guilt anymore. You have given us the honor of being your sons and daughters. So we pray that we will live like Jesus. And that you will shine through us, Lord Jesus. And that our homes will be a better place. That our children will see Jesus within us. And that we will have a home of peace and love. For your honor and glory, O oh Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.